up, I've got uh, Mackish with me, uh, coming at you to talk about Leptos Use. It's a utility library for Leptos inspired by React Use, Vue Use, and SolidJS Use. Uh, and it's a library that can save you a ton of time implementing things from scratch yourself. And one of my personal favorites. Uh, so welcome, Mackish. Take it away. Hi. Thanks, Daniel, for the nice introduction. You already basically uh, took away the first the first 30 seconds of my talk. Thank you about that. <laughs> that gives me more time. Um, I wanted to present a little bit. I want to do this um, with the documentation as a, okay. How do you do this? Just share just share your screen and I'll bring it in. Okay. I'm sharing. Ah, it works. Awesome. Excellent. <clears throat> Very good. So yeah, this is about Leptos use. <clears throat> and as Daniel already said, this is sort of meant to be a standard library for Leptos of um, utility functions that you often need, but that are still too specific to go into Leptos proper. And I just wanted to share a few of the more popular functions maybe, and also how the documentation is structured so that you know how to read it and get quickly around in this library. There is use color mode, <clears throat> and this can be used to make the best and shortest uh, color switcher in your app. Um, and as it says here, it's a re reactive color mode switcher with data persistence. So this will also be persisted in local storage at the same time. And it's very easy to use. You can see here, most functions have a demo section here where you can see a quick demo. In this case, it cycles through the default top um, themes of, of MD book, right? So there's light, rust, coal, navy, all of this. There is always a link to the source code on GitHub here. And when I click here, it um, goes there. And of course, now it takes a while to load. <clears throat> while that is loading, I guess we can continue. Below that, we have a usage section that's all, always the same in the functions where you see a quick little example. In this case, you see it's really easy to use. You just call use color mode and you get a return type with sort of a signal-like um, API, I guess. There is a mode signal, read signal, and there's a set mode write signal, and you can use them like this, right? And this will reactively change. And if you, you want to change it in your app, you can just call set mode dot set. And yeah, it didn't load. Awesome. It's like now it loads. And you can see here, this is the source code for the demo that I just showed. And it's actually part of the examples folder. So almost all of the examples that you see in the source code, source code are actually compiled into the book and made available as demos. Yeah, and then we come to another function that is, <clears throat> yes, if uh, another feature of the, of like almost all functions is that you have kind of two versions of the function. There is the simple one, in this case, use color mode, and the more, let's say, advanced one, which is use color mode with options, this one. And then you can specify options. Uh, and the way these options are always implemented is with a builder pattern. So you call the default on the option, and then you just uh, call the methods for the individual options that you want to change. In this case, we want to use the attribute theme, and we have some custom color modes that we want to use. And if you want to know what kind of options are available, there's always down here in the type sections, there's a link to the options documentation. So if I go here to the options documentation, you can see it links to the Rust docs. And here you see target, attribute, initial value. You see all the different options that you have with documentation. And some other types that, that might be helpful uh, here. Um, yeah. And finally, there's also the server side rendering, right? Almost all functions are safe to use with SSR. In this case, 
it will only it always on the server always return column mode light and there's of course no local storage on the server so this won't work but this is how it behaves and you should be able to easily use it within within some side rendered app yeah so that's that's that um i guess we take questions at the end right otherwise I, i'd stop now if somebody has questions for that function um but i guess i'll, I'll continue is that correct yeah, you can keep on going. You've got okay. some more to talk about. Yeah, and then there is use event listener. And I think this is maybe, if I had to pick, this would be probably the most useful function of all of them. This is actually also used internally in a ton of other functions. And this just gives you a nice and easy way to add an event listener to somewhere in the code. And this is most useful if you want to add it to somewhere um, where it's not inside your component, right? If it's inside your component, you need to just use an on click or whatever uh, um, in the macro and an attribute. But if you look at this example, right, if you want to add some event listener to the document, which is a common theme, uh, then you can just use that. And it will still automatically clean it up when the component is cleaned up. So it will automatically remove the event listener. <clears throat> and it's very easy to use. You can see it here, right? Use event listener. We specify the, it could, could be a node ref or this uh, document and what event and then the event listener. So it's quite easy <clears throat> to, uh, to use here. Yeah. Let's go to the next question, to the next uh, function. I already mentioned the local storage for the color mode. There is this use storage or it's kind of its cousins use local storage use session storage and it allows you to easily store things in your local storage right so in this case we have this banana state this is the struct that is getting stored and so if i change something here right uh, some values now i can reload and because they're stored they will reappear and we can also see that here in the dev tools, right? We have here the banana state and it has this state uh, saved there. We can actually delete it, right? So, and now it's gone. And all of this is made very easy with this function. So what you would do is you would define some kind of state. And this example is a bit different. It's this my state struct. Um, and then you can store it with use local storage. You store it in my state and you store it in this case with a JSON codec. That's why we had to derive serialize, deserialize here. And then you have um, this reactive uh, API, right? State, set state that you already know to read or write the state. And you can also use a set the session storage. This works like this. If you have a very simple type, in this case, a bool, you can use a string codec, which uses a two string from string implementation. And then you don't need 30 in your app, saving your uh, binary size, right? Um, yeah, how am I on time? Do I have time for one more? Yeah, of course. I actually Go forgot ahead. to start my, my time. Okay, then let's, let's do one more. <laughs> um, Use the bounce function. Um, there are several debounce or throttle uh, features in Laptos use. In this case, uh, it's easiest to demonstrate what it does, right? I, oh, I already clicked this before, so let's reload. So I click this and you can see the button click increased, but the event handler doesn't increase. Now I stop and with a one second delay, um, it calls the event handler, right? So whenever I stop, only after I stop for one second, it will call the event handler. Um, that's often useful for things like, like this example shows where you have the resize event, right? And in uh, uh, resize events or also scroll events, which happen often uh, several times per second, you're not supposed to do anything uh, too costly because then it will slow down the scrolling or the resizing. So you debounce it and do it, do it a, bit, a little bit later. Like, uh, yeah, like, network calls or whatever. And it works very simple, right? You have a use the debounce function. You actually provide the function that you want to call uh, with the delay, and then you get back the new function and that function you can actually call to get the debounced behavior. 
yeah. <clears throat> there are also some, some options you can look at them if you need them. Yeah, I think um, that's probably five minutes, right? If I am correct. Yeah, if there's, uh, if there's anything else that you want to, uh, critical that you want to bring up, by all means. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I'd like to uh, sorry, didn't say again. Uh, uh, otherwise, we can move into the Q and A period. Yes, absolutely. I'd like to uh, finish with we are looking for contributions, right? So, as Greg already said, this might be a good start to contribute. Um, it's little self-contained functions. Um, so yeah, it might be a good place. We are already looking for contribution, and you can just hit me up on on Discord and ask if you if you have any doubts. Great, and there is a Leptos use channel specifically on the Leptos Discord itself as well. Uh, so that's the the best place to uh, to go and talk about Leptos use. Uh, so the first question that we got for you. Uh, is is there a leptos use function that you're working on right now that you're excited about someone's coming from ben on discord um yeah there are kind of several uh, one is from from jack uh, use cookies which is exciting um uh, he's mostly working on that but i i'm excited to look into that a bit and and see if there's something i can contribute and there's also a function that has been in the work for a while, which is to use web transport. Um, I haven't worked on it for a while and I wanted to wait until the new reactivity and async things are out uh, to, to finish the, the API. But I think that that could be nice. In addition to, to WebSocket, uh, which we already support in Leptos use, this would be a very, very cutting edge thing. Oh, good to hear. Uh, actually, I know that uh, Leptos 0 0.6 just came out. Uh, how far along are you on uh, on supporting the, the new version? Um, we, a few days ago, I released on main support for 0 0.6 beta, and everything still seems to work so far. So uh, I think in the next probably next week there will be a release with some new functions and with support for 0 0.6. Ah, excellent. Oh, so a couple of new functions coming to Leptos use. Yes, we're always trying to, to get more, right? The, the, the kind of uh, what we want to achieve is like to have feature parity with SolidJS use, with has, which has like more than 200 functions. So we are still a bit, bit away from that, but someday. OK. So if, if someone's looking to contribute, that would be a good place to start looking. Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, uh, another one from Ben on Discord. Uh, he's asking, have you thought about making a use auth method? Um, to be honest, I haven't thought about that. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> off, off the top of my head, I, I wouldn't even know where to start. But if there are some ideas, or if there's even like a pull request, like I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. Great. So another way to uh, to get people involved. Uh, if you've got any more questions, uh, please post them in uh, in YouTube or on Discord. Uh, we've got one here on on YouTube. We've got uh, Inno asking, are there plans to add a use index DB at all? Um, actually, a few weeks back, I looked into that, and right now, I don't think that. I think it's a little bit out of out of scope for for laptops use. I'm happy to be uh, convinced otherwise, uh, but as far as I know, there are already libraries out there that kind of have a nice almost ORM-like mapping to IndexedDB that I think you could even use in, in WebAssembly. And this is like a whole thing, right? Index DB is not is not a it's not a small thing, so it seems to me that's a better fit for a, for a specific library. But yeah, I, I don't know if if there are use cases where there are like thin wrappers around Index DB needed, then that might be a fit for for Lepto's use. Oh, interesting to hear. Uh, 
uh, general consensus from the community. Everybody finds your library super helpful. So big thank you from the community there. Uh, Thanks, I'm very good. Yeah, I've received a, I've received a couple of messages of people very uh, very um, adamant about letting you know how appreciative they are of the work that you put in and how good a, great of a job you've done. So um, so thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. That means a lot. Yes. Well, and, and also being responsive in Discord as well. That's another great thing about the Leptos community is that uh, the uh, the ecosystem authors uh, have have really taken part in uh, uh, in answering questions on Discord and helping people out when uh, when they're just onboarding. Uh, so, uh, you know, big thank you to uh, to you as well as uh, as the wider Leptos uh, ecosystem in general. Yes.